Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. What are complex numbers? Well, Z is a complex number, you can write it as A plus BI, which is also the name of this channel, in case you didn't know. And complex numbers are actually defined as A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers and I is the square root of negative one, which is not real or called imaginary, right? I also have another channel called Cyber Math. Go ahead and check it out. I make algebra and number theory videos in general, sometimes geometry, a little bit of trigonometry here and there. Okay, so let's see how we can solve an equation like this. And if you're new to complex numbers, you know very little or nothing about complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos because I start with the definition and go over the basics of complex numbers. And if you're think that you can propose a problem, definitely do so in the comment section down below, or there's a form you can fill out, which I rarely check, but I do check once in a while. And let us know always if you have any questions in the comment section down below. Great, so we have this equation, which is called exponential for a good reason, two plus i, which is a complex number, raised to the power z, which makes this exponential, equals three plus four i. So how do you solve an equation like this? Okay, if they told you, okay, 2 to the power z equals 4, you could solve it easily because you know that z is 4. Why? Because you can write 4 as 2 squared. That would be super easy. Or if they told you 2 to the power z is square root of 2, then you know that square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half, right? Those are very straightforward questions. But when the base is a complex number, a non-real complex number, because complex numbers can also be real sometimes, and you get another non-real complex number. How do you deal with something like this? And I know some people are going to say, okay, let's just log both sides. Do you want to use a log base 10 or natural log? Natural log is probably better. Let's just ln both sides. And that should give us the solution, right? Well, sort of. Bring the, mo uh, bring the z to the front. z ln 2 plus i equals ln 3 plus 4i. And then from here, z becomes ln 3 plus 4i divided by ln 2 plus i. Great. This might give us a solution, but how? You need to be able to log a complex number. So how do you do the complex logarithm? That's a good question. Let me tell you. There's actually a formula. If you have ln of a plus bi in general, let's just generalize it, can be written as ln of absolute value of a plus bi, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared, plus i times the argument of a plus bi. What is the argument of a plus bi? We'll talk about it. We need to plot a complex number in the argand plane and then look at the angle that it makes. And we want to look at the positive angle, which means, for example, if you have a complex number like this, let's say it's denoted by this point, and it makes an angle like this, and usually measured in radians. So theta is the argument, the angle. And this is called the real axis, this is called the imaginary axis, the whole thing is called the Argand plane. Just a fancy name for our good old coordinate plane, all right? And of course, there is also something called the distance from zero, which is denoted by r, and r is the absolute value. In this case, r happens to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, I already gave it to you, instead of writing l and r, okay? I don't know if this is the best version, but this is kind of like a formula that only uses A and B on the right-hand side. So you know what everything is, except for argument, of course. About the argument, one thing to keep in mind. If the real part is A and the imaginary part is B, and let's just keep it simple. In the first quadrant, A and B are both positive. So tangent theta will be B over A. But at the same time, our tangent B over A is also going to be theta. Why did I say in this case? Because if your theta is in the third quadrant, b over a is also going to be positive, but a and b are both negative. So when you do the arctangent, you're going to have to deal with an angle that is greater than pi radians or 180 degrees. So you kind of need to add pi to the result. So theta is not going to be arctangent b over a, it's going to be arctangent b over a plus pi. Make sense? So you kind of have to consider the quadrants, but let's keep it simple for now without going into too many complications. So how do you go from here? Well, I can try to find this and then that and see if that simplifies. Okay, let's try it. And this will be my first method. 
and I'll show you the second method, okay? So how do you ln 3 plus 4i? So two things I need to do. This is a plus b i, so a is 3, b is 4. So r is just going to be 5, the modulus difference, right? Distance from 0 from Pythagorean theorem, right? 3, 4, 5. And then this is the critical part. Tangent theta is just going to be 4 over 3. But guess what? I'm still in the first quadrant. So theta is going to be arc tangent 4 over 3. Okay. So we kind of need to find out what arc tangent 4 over 3 is, right? We have an angle whose tangent is 4 thirds, and we know that it's between 0 and pi over 2. It's in the first quadrant. Great. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, but let's write this in uh, whatever standard form first. It's going to be ln 5 plus, this is going to be i times arc tangent 4 thirds. Great. So I got the result. Similarly, for 2 plus i, we're going to get ln square root of 5 plus i times arc tangent 1 half. So here's the million dollar question. How are these related, right? That's what I need to find. But one thing that is really helpful is that, uh-oh, I noticed that this is the square root of 5, so I can kind of write it as 1 half ln 5 plus i times arc 10 1 half. So there needs to be a relationship between arc 10 1 half and arc 10 4 thirds. So here's what we're th thinking about. Is there is an angle whose tangent is one half, and of course the hypotenuse is going to be square root of five, right? Which is the modulus, and then uh, uh, I'm going to call this alpha. Okay, so this is alpha. Makes sense. And then I want to do something like this. Hmm. I want to get an angle whose tangent is four thirds. Four thirds is definitely greater than one half. So guess what? I'm going to start with 4 thirds. So is the idea. Let's go ahead and call this alpha. I changed my mind. This is alpha. And let's draw a triangle with those conditions. Uh, 4 thirds is probably going to give us, uh, it's not drawn to scale necessarily, but something like this. This is alpha. This is 4 thirds and this is 5. Now here is something that is miraculous. Extend the base, 5 units, as long as the hypotenuse, and connect these. And you notice that this becomes, this becomes, uh, isosceles triangle. This becomes a 4, that becomes an 8. So tangent beta becomes 4 eighths, which is 1 half, which means beta is arc tangent 1 half. But since beta is also in the first quadrant, it'll be this angle right here. Make sense? This is beta. So what do you know? Since this is an isosceles triangle, this is also beta. So alpha is equal to 2 beta. Awesome. So alpha is 2 beta. What does that mean? It means that I can replace alpha with 2 beta. So this is, this is what I have. Let me rewrite the original expression. I have this. And now that gives me ln 5 plus... 1 half, uh, no, i times alpha, and this is 1 half ln 5 plus i times beta. Are you ready for the hocus pocus? I'm about to replace alpha with 2 beta. Let's do it. Ta-da! Something interesting happens. Now I can go ahead and factor out a 2, and that gives me 1 half of ln 5 plus i times beta divided by 1 half of ln 5 plus i times beta, and these two cancel out, leaving us with 2. Uh-oh, the answer is 2. But is that what we were looking for? Yes, absolutely. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because second method, I think, will make things a lot clearer. Hopefully, right? So what did we have? 2 plus i to the power z equals 3 plus 4i. Now take a look at this. If you take 2 plus i and square it, you'll get 4 plus i squared plus 4i, but i squared is negative 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, so this becomes 3 plus 4i. Uh-oh, that means z is equal to 2. Is that the only solution? Probably. You can definitely check it out, and we kind of checked it out with the first solution, but that's pretty much it. How did you know that it was it? Definitely you can look at the moduli, that'll tell you the truth. And this brings us to the end of this video. 
Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.